Hi, I'm Matthew Alonso. I'm a PhD student in Agricultural and Biological Engineering, and I'm studying uh, stored solar thermal energy uh, with Dr. Bruce Litchfield. Uh, we just started up this lab uh, last year with funding from IC, the Institute for Sustainability, Energy, and Environment. Solar cooking is something we've all probably maybe seen or experienced before. Um, if you leave a pot of water out, just out in the open, that pot of water is going to be warm when you go and pick it up and try to take it in because it's, it's collected energy from the sun. Um, the most basic type of, of solar energy is just putting something out in a box and covering it so that the heat can be collected from the sun and protected. Um, solar cooking is, is really addressing the, the issue of energy availability. Um, we have a lot of energy around the world stored in the form of carbon, uh, oil, wood, gas, and, and other sources that hurt our environment when we use them. We also have this abundant source of sun, and the sun is providing more energy every hour than all of human society is using in, in a year. And it's storing that solar thermal energy and being able to use it for one of the most energy intensive tasks in our homes, C cooking, uh, I think will really have a fundamental impact on one, how we view energy, how we use it, and uh, help us improve our environment. There are three billion people in the world who are still cooking on solid-based fuels like wood um, or charcoal or even animal dung. And that's killing around four million people annually from indoor air pollution. And many of these people um, live in regions of the world with really strong sources of the sun that's, that's readily available for them to use. Um, but because of their lifestyles and also because of just the sun itself, it's so hot, that they cannot um, use, utilize solar energy during the day. Um, their lifestyles are set up where they cook their meals in the morning and at night. With stored solar thermal energy, uh, they'll have the ability to cook meals when it's convenient for them and be able to transition from those solid-based fuels. Uh, one thing that we, we really need to understand is how we can store the solar thermal energy and then recover it uh, for use in cooking. We're really trying to figure out uh, what type of energy storage materials are available that can store a lot of energy and at an appropriate temperature. Um, people have a certain expectation of how fast things should cook and in order to get them to, to transition from something as, as convenient to them as fire, um, we really need something that cooks at a speed that's very similar and has the same feel as fire. So we've, we've looked at different solar thermal storage materials, we're looking at different device designs, we've looked at different ways to charge the system, um, different types of concentration methods. You know, we're, we're really starting to focus in now on using parabolic solar cookers with some vacuum insulation technology and different types of high energy storage salts to, to solve this problem. So um, back in October, just a couple months ago, uh, in 2014, uh, my advisor Bruce and I drove out to Colorado and we did our, our first charging study. So we took a bunch of these stored solar energy vessels and we just spent all day solar cooking, heating them up, cooling them down and sending them out. And that, that was a nice, a nice feel good moment for us because we knew that we could at least charge the vessels and that we could go back in the lab and figure out how to get the energy back for cooking. Bruce and I are definitely trying to take this commercial because we know that the, the one way to really make change will be to start a business and uh, produce these in a way that it's economically sustainable. Um, so we have. Uh, we started a company called Sun Buckets and we're, we're still waiting to really get it going. Um, but you know, one day we hope to have Sun Buckets around the world.